After years of exile, the Jews decided that they've had it with Pharaoh and the Egyptians. So they decided to escape. Ah! There are the Jews! There are the Jews! But before they left, they decided to trash the pyramids that they spent years building. But worse, they hacked into the Egyptian TV network and blocked Pharaoh's favorite channel, the Calcium Channel. Ah! My Calcium Channel is blocked! Hey, welcome to our scene on Calcium Channel Blockers, represented by this scene taking place in Egypt, where the Jews escaped from Pharaoh, they trashed his pyramids, and worst of all, they blocked the Egyptian Calcium Channel, and now Pharaoh can no longer watch his favorite channel, the Calcium Channel. In this scene, we're going to talk about Calcium Channel Blockers, their mechanism of action, their clinical use, and their adverse effects. So you may be wondering, why is this scene taking place in Egypt? What do calcium channel blockers have to do with Egypt? Well, let's take a look. We see two different pyramids over here that the Jews trashed. Over here we see the dyed pyramid. It's dyed, they dyed it with some sort of dyeing paint or something. And it's very high. So this is the dyed high pyramid. Dyed high pyramid is going to help us remember the dihydropyridines. So the dyed high pyramid over here for dihydropyridines. That's the first group of calcium channel blockers that we want to know. And over here we see another pyramid that they trashed. But they didn't dye this one. This is the non-dyed one. The non-dyed high pyramid for non-dihydropyridines. Let's begin by talking about the dihydropyridines. So again, over here we see the dyed high pyramid for dihydropyridines. Which drugs are included in the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers? Well, let's take a look. We see that they've taken this 9 card, this is the 9 card, and they stuck it on top of the pyramid. I don't know why they did that, but for our purposes, it helps us remember 9 card, or 9 card, 9 cardipine. We don't need to remember peen, because all the dihydropyridines end in a peen. So 9 card for 9 card, 9 cardipine. Over here we see the knife that they stuck right through the pyramid. Knife for nifedipine. Then they stuck these random yams over here, very low. The yams that are low, or the ams that are low, for amlo, amlodipine. Finally, they took nemo and also stuck it in the pyramid over here, for nemodipine. So again, the dihydropyridines include nicardipine, nifedipine, amlodipine, and nimodipine. These drugs, the dihydropyridines, mainly act on the smooth muscle cells of blood vessels. And that's why if you take a look over here, we see the Jews over here who are escaping in this tunnel over here. They're walking through this blood vessel to help us remember that the dihydropyridines act mainly on smooth muscle cells of blood vessels. Now, the dihydropyridines are used mainly to treat hypertension, and that's why we see this blood pressure cuff randomly on top of this vessel-looking tunnel over here. Blood pressure cuff that is high up on this tunnel. The high blood pressure cuff for high blood pressure. Dihydropyridines are used to treat hypertension and they do this by acting on the arterial smooth muscle. The exception to this, however, is nimodipine. Nimodipine is not used to treat hypertension. It's primarily used to treat subarachnoid hemorrhage by preventing cerebral vasospasm. And that's why if you noticed over here, Nemo's head was actually in the pyramid to help us remember that nimodipine is used to treat subarachnoid hemorrhage. And then we see this hand over here, the blue fingertips, in which the fingertips turn blue, in which the fingertips turn white, blue, and then red especially when it's cold outside or a person is feeling stressed. This hand over here with the fingertips that are blue are to help us remember that the dihydropyridines are used to treat Raynaud's syndrome. Now, before we talk about the non-dihydropyridines, let's take a look over here. We see this guy up here, who kind of looks like he's high. He's really excited about the escape from Egypt. This guy over here is going to help us remember potential side effects in a patient taking dihydropyridines. The side effects are primarily caused by the vasodilatory effects. This includes flushing, and that's why we see the flushing in his face over here. 
We can tell from his eyes that he's very dizzy. Dizziness is a side effect. And he's riding on this hydrant over here, which is squirting out water, which reminds us of the edema, peripheral edema. And finally, we note that there's this random mouth over here that's got a lot of gums. Gingival hyperplasia is an adverse effect of the dihydropyridines. And as we'll see, it's also a side effect of the non-dihydropyridines, which we'll talk about right now. So here we see the non-dihyde pyramid for non-dihydropyridines. And we see that there's this tie over here, a really cool looking tie with dill on it. This is the dill tie. Dill tie for diltiazem. I don't know why the Jews put this over here. I guess the Jews weren't so into this dill tie. They weren't so into the dill tie, so they left it for Pharaoh. Dill tie, dill tiezem. And over here we see that they left this mill over here. It's like a windmill, a mill. And this mill over here actually raps. He knows how to rap. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Good, goodbye, Pharaoh. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Good, goodbye, Pharaoh. He raps, and he actually has a V on him. So this is the V rapping mill. The V rapping mill for verapamil. So again, verapamil and diltiazem are the non-dihydropyridines that we want to be aware of. Let's talk about them. These drugs are highly selective towards the heart. And that's why if you take a look over here, we have these Jews hanging out over here on the heart. And this helps us remember that diltiazem and verapamil are selective towards the heart. In fact, they're antiarrhythmics, class 4 antiarrhythmics. And accordingly, indications for these non-dihydropyridines include arrhythmias, such as those that cause an increase in heart rate, such as tachyarrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, and atrial flutter. Both of these medications also decrease myocardial contractility. But if you take a look over here, you'll see that there's a blood pressure cuff up over here, which helps us remember that the non-dihydropyridines can also be used to treat hypertension. And that's because they can act somewhat as vasodilators, although not as good as the dihydropyridines. And just as a side point, diltiazem is more effective as a vasodilator than verapamil. Hey, cool, there's this angel over here. Maybe this angel is so excited about the escape from Egypt. This angel is going to help us remember angina, that both the dihydropyridines and the non-dihydropyridines are used to treat angina. Okay, now let's talk about the side effects of the non-dihydropyridines. And for that, we have this panda over here. This panda was also super excited about the Jews' escape from Egypt. This panda relaxing. This hyper panda who's relaxing. Hyper panda relaxing for hyperprolactin. Hyperprolactinemia. Especially in the case of verapamil. And then we see, you might have noticed that the hyper panda was on this heart. This heart is depressed. A very sad and depressed heart for cardiac depression. Non-dihydropyridines may lead to cardiac depression. This panda decided to bring his AV blocks along to help us remember the AV block. AV block is another adverse effect of the non-dihydropyridines. And this, and I forgot to mention that this heart is actually depressed because he's constipated. He's been on this toilet for a very long time and he's constipated, as constipation is another side effect. And again, we notice this mouth over here with the excessive gums to help us remember gingival hyperplasia, which is also an adverse effect of the non-dihydropyridines. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the calcium channel blockers. Take care.